top 10 favorite fantasy books I have read in 2023. But first, let's start with honorable mention. The first one on honorable mention is Empire of Dearth by Philip C. Quainter, which is book two in the Echo Saga trilogy. Now, if you are a fan of John Gwynn or Ryan Cahill, then this is definitely the series you should be checking out. It feels very classic, but also modern. The pacing is ruthless, the scale is absolutely epic, and there are like nine books in the primary series, and a prequel novella has just come out, so there are so many books to get stuck into. If you enjoy like, yeah, as I said, classic fantasy that feels modern, and I really, really hope that I'll be able to get to the third book in the first trilogy, this year. The second book on the honorable mention is Call of the Bone Ships by RJ Barker. So this is also book two, but it's book two in the Tai Chal trilogy. Now, if you're looking for something new and different to the genre, a series that seriously has some really strange world building, great characters, and massive, massive sea dragons, then this is the series for you. Now, I think that this series has quite a steep learning curve because RJ Barker has invented so much new terminology and he literally just throws you into this world. Um, I've said this in the past, but I think a lot of people would probably DNF the series if they picked it up, just because it can feel quite daunting to get into. But I found the experience really, really rewarding. And as I said, it just is so unique and it brings something new to the genre. So I'm really happy I read this one. And book two was my favorite in the trilogy. The other book on my honorable mention is Recursion by Blake Crouch. I absolutely love this book. I read it in like three days. I have also read Dark Matter. Hint, hint. <laughs> but yeah, this book is absolutely phenomenal. If you're into sci-fi thrillers, which is a subgenre I did not know I needed in my life, then pick up this. I mean, Blake Crouch, absolutely incredible, and I really need to read Upgrade next, because um, yeah, I'm absolutely addicted to his novels now. <laughs> the fourth book on the honorable mention is the Combat Codes by Alexander Darwin. Now this was a massive surprise because I didn't really expect to love this novel, but I just got hooked into it and I really need to pick up book two. If you are a fan of fantasy that is set in a more modern setting, that has a really good underdog and a mentor, which has great pacing and satisfying plot twists, and overall just has that addictive feel, then the Combat Codes is for you. I absolutely love this. I am very surprised. It feels almost underrated. So definitely worth checking out. And the last book on the honorable mention is The Jade Setters of Jan Loon by Fonda Lee. So this is a prequel novella, which I read in one sitting because I was absolutely mesmerized. Now, you know, The Green Bone Saga is in my top three all time favorite trilogies. Absolutely incredible. And the amount of emotion and feelings and like impact Fonda Lee was able to have on me with such few pages was just incredible. And also, if you have read the Greenbone Saga, then one of my favorite, and probably also one of your favorite characters, does make an appearance in this one. And what I love about this one is that we learn new things about a very, very minor clan in this world. So it just fleshes out the world a bit, and yeah, it is absolutely brilliant. So definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of the Greenbone Saga. Now, do you know what else is top-notch? Wonder, which is a brand new European fantasy and sci-fi bookstore, founded because finding English sci-fi and fantasy books in the non-English speaking parts of Europe can be a massive challenge. Now, the goal of this new bookstore is to provide the most extensive selection of fantasy and sci-fi books in stock and ready to ship and if not able to get it to you on a short notice. Now beyond providing an extensive selection of books, Wonder strives to foster a vibrant community of diverse SFF readers and if you have any recommendations for what books you would like to see in their store then you can send them a message directly. Now books are so valuable whether it's the words inside or an expensive special edition and therefore Wonder makes makes sure that all their books that they ship are packaged with the utmost care, ready for sometimes the very bumpy road to your door. Now, all the books you order on Wonder should arrive in the shape they were in when they left their shelves. Now, if you are in Europe and you're looking for some new books, then please go and take a look at Wonder's website over at wonderbooks.com and you can get a 15% discount by entering the code VIKING15 at the checkout. Thank you so much for Wonder for responding to this video. Now, now let's get back to the video. All right, on spot number 10, we have Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. Now, I know I've said in the past that I was maybe slightly disappointed with the Red Rising trilogy because I expected this series to become my all-time favorite series potentially. And while I really enjoyed all three books, especially Golden Sun and Morning Star, it just didn't hit those ridiculously high notes that I had hoped for, but nonetheless, Golden Sun was an absolute thrill of a book. I really enjoyed it. While Red Rising kind of feels like a Hunger Games kind of novel, 
This gave me everything I hoped to get in this novel. We have brilliant politics, we have a massive epic scale, and it truly feels like a modern space opera. And what I think Pierce Brown does really, really well is pacing and shocking plot twists. And there's so many throughout this whole series. I think that's probably also why people are so addicted to Red Rising, is because you never really know what you're gonna get from this novel, because yeah, there's so many twists and turns. Gold of Sun is definitely my favorite book in the series, and I look forward to continuing this series, hopefully next year. On ninth spot, we have, which I believe is the longest book I read this year, and I read this early in the year, Of War and Ruin by Ryan Cahill, the third book in the Bound and the Broken series. I mean, look at this. You could probably kill someone with this if you threw it hard enough. I mean, if you have read the hardback, then I I applaud you because this is just so, so heavy. But yeah, Ryan Kyle, he just gets better and better with every single book. And this is definitely like probably his masterpiece as of now because this is, what is it? On Kindle is 1500 pages. But yeah, yeah similar to John Gwen and Philip Sequential now, if you enjoy that classic fantasy that feels modern, it has a lot of the familiar tropes, but Ryan Kyle also puts a lot of twists on them. And the scale is, absolutely massive. I think for his next book he's gonna have like nine POVs or something. I mean it is absolutely insane but it's just so addictive and what I just love is just how many dragons we have in this one. So yeah, the rank highly just gets better and better and um, I would definitely recommend checking out this series if you haven't yet. On 8th spot we have The Trials of Empire by Richard Swan, which is the third book in the Empire of the Wolves trilogy and this has become one of my all-time favorite trilogies. When you're watching this, I may have released a video talking about the series or it is on its way, I don't know really, but absolutely astounding. If you're into fresh and modern fantasy, if you're into fantasy that has really, really good politics where most of the tension is in the dialogue and for book two and three, if you're into like medieval horror fantasy as well, which is something I didn't know I also need in my life, then check out this one because the third book is seriously dark. Now in my opinion, The Trials of Empire was a 4 out of 5 star read for me, but it's still an absolutely brilliant conclusion. And what I just love about it is that like the horror elements are really really heightened in the third book. It just felt so unique and fresh and absolutely horrifying and yeah, brilliant characters, everything. I just can't recommend this series enough and yeah, I'll definitely be making a video about this series. On 7th spot is a book I wasn't planning on starting this year, but The Broken Binding kind of changed my plans and that is Promise of Blood by Brian McClellan. I'm actually currently reading the second book in this series as well, which is just as good, but man, this has really, really blown me away. When I started this, it kind of felt like the inferior Age of Madness by Joe Abercrombie, but I'm so happy that this did not turn out to be exactly like the Age of Madness. Now, this is steampunk fantasy, so they are like guns. It feels a bit more modern, but I just, oh, it's so, so good. Similar to lots of other fantasies, we have this kingdom that is starting to fall apart, but I just love the magic system. There's just so much backstabbing and the fantastical elements here, like we have gods walking among us, or they're gods, but they're not really gods in the typical sense. I mean, just a blend of steampunk, fantastical elements, bit of grim dark. it just works brilliantly and I find the characters so so good. And my favorite plotline in this film, Adamat, it kind of feels like it's a whodunit plotline like an Agatha Christie where we're trying to discover like who murdered the king or who murdered this person, you know? And um, it, it is just brilliant. I, I'm absolutely loving it. Reading the second book now, loving it. So if the third book sticks the landing, then the Powder Mate trilogy will probably become one of my new all-time favorite series absolutely brilliant. More people need to read this. Now, I know Daniel Green and stuff have raved about the series in the past, but yeah, I'm just very, very surprised by how much I've enjoyed Promise of Blood and the second book, and you should definitely pick up this series. On Sixth Path, obviously, I'll take any opportunity I have to talk about Angel Sin by Daniel T. Jackson. This is book two in the Ilborn saga. Ilborn is probably one of my all-time favorite series, even though there's only two books, because the first book I gave five out of five stars, and the sequel that came out this year, I also gave five out of five stars. Absolutely, oh, I'm, I'm addicted. There is just something utterly, utterly captivating and addictive with how Daniel T. Jackson writes and plans and plots his books, if that makes any sense. We do have four different POVs, and what he does so masterfully, one of the best I've ever come across, is balancing all the different POVs. Now, I did an interview with Daniel T. Jackson on my Patreon like a year ago or so, but he said that he goes throughout the novel first and plans all the POVs just to ensure that we spend around 25% of the time with every single one. 
and it just works absolutely brilliantly. And while in Illborn, the four POVs almost felt like four different like novellas that were slowly being tied together. In this book, the POVs overlap much, much more. And yeah, I just found it utterly, utterly satisfying. Every single chapter adds so much tension and every single chapter almost feels like a story in of itself. Like I can't really describe why this is so addictive, but yeah, Illborn, more people need to pick it up. It is just incredible. <laughs> On fifth spot, obviously I had to have a book by Robin Hobb. Now I read the tournament trilogy this year and while I absolutely loved this trilogy, it did not reach the same heights as Fireseer or the Life Ship Changer trilogy, but still, if you're a fan of Robin Hobb, it's very, very much worth reading. And Fool's Errand, which is book one, was the best in the series. Incredible characterizations. This might be one of the best characterizations. If people start to ask me what are the best characters in fantasy, Fitz will probably be the character that comes first to my mind. If you enjoy getting your heart broken and you enjoy seeing a character that is very problematic but also suffers so, so much and he just cannot get out of this like endless loop of suffering, then this series is for you. It will break your heart but it's just so, so beautifully written. And yeah, I absolutely can't wait to continue this series next year. On fourth spot, we have a sci-fi book, which is Children of Time by Adrian Jakowski. Now, this was a massive surprise because prior to this one, I had read, I think, two or three Jakowski books, which hadn't really worked for me. But then I picked up this book and it blew me away. This is arguably the best sci-fi book I read now, or at least the best hard sci-fi book. I'm not going to give you the whole synopsis because I made a full spoiler-free video about this book. But what I'll just say here is that while this is hard sci-fi, the concept is so ridiculously captivating and interesting that you just have to keep reading. Now, if you're afraid of spiders, because we basically follow a population of spiders that becomes intelligent, then maybe stay away from this. But yeah, otherwise, I mean, Tchaikovsky is an absolute genius. It's just a really shame. I picked up book two in the series a couple of months ago, and I just, I almost hated it. I didn't connect with a single page in that book. So that just goes to show that not always book two and three are better, but yeah, Children of Time, it can be read totally as a standalone because book two almost feels like something totally different. So yeah, pick up this one. It is a sci-fi standalone in my opinion and it is a masterpiece. On third spot we have Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I read this book in less than a day because I had to get to the end of it. I mean, talk about an addictive plot. Now, I feel like almost everyone on Booktube has already read this novel, but if you haven't, then check out Blake Crouch Recursion and Dark Matter, this one. They're both almost equally as good. I think just because I read Dark Matter first, I enjoyed it slightly more. Probably the best pacing in the genre, and every single chapter just adds so much tension, and it is just the most thrilling, book I might, I might have read in my whole life. Now, it is 300 pages, but there's not that much text on each page, so it just feels like you are flipping the pages every 30 seconds or so, which in my opinion, reading experience is so much better. But yeah, who knew that like traveling through like parallel universes and stuff like that could be so emotional? I mean, I've watched Interstellar, so I should, probably shouldn't be surprised, but yeah. An absolutely brilliant, brilliant novel. I would challenge you to read the first 20 or 30 pages. If you're not hooked by that point, then fair, but I think most of you will read this and you're like, okay, I have to know how this ends. That was my experience and I read it in a day. And yeah, one of my favorite books of the year. I gave it five out of five stars for sure. On second spot, we are going back in time to the 1989, I think, when The Dragon Bone Chair by Ted Williams was published. Now I finished this book last month. We read it for the Viking Book Club on my Patreon. And yeah, this is the book that inspired a Game of Thrones. And I've made a full spoiler-free video about my experience reading this book, so I would highly recommend it. But similar to Robin Hobb, we have slow pacing, we have beautiful writing. Ted Williams is very, very similar. The writing style here is honestly maybe the best I've come across in the genre as of yet. I was absolutely captivated. You know it's beautiful written because the first 200 pages, almost nothing happens. We just follow our protagonist almost just walking around the castle for 200 pages and I loved it. I loved every single moment in this world. It just, it's been a while since I felt so immersed in a story and also the characters are brilliant. The plot is fascinating 
And if you're looking for a Game of Thrones kind of book that has the same pacing as Robin Hobb and is written similarly, then The Dragon Bone Chair is the book for you. Utterly, utterly captivating. Um, I absolutely can't wait to read all of Ted Williams' other work. Like, I've added all of his works to my TBR now. Because, yeah, he if he's even as close as Robin Hobb when it comes to writing, which this book definitely seems to show that he is, then I need to read everything he's written because it's been a while since I've been so captivated by a fantasy novel. Now, on spot number one, which may or may not be a surprise for many, but that is The Wall of Storms by Ken Liu. This is also a chunk of a book. But yeah, The Dantan Dynasty is firmly on its way to become one of my all-time favorite series. The Grace of Kings is an incredible book and I really debated putting it on this list as well but the plot and the scale can be quite daunting and the first book almost reads like a history book because we cover I don't know like 15 or 20 years the plot in Grace of Kings if Robert Jordan wrote that book he would probably have taken 12 books just to write the Grace of Kings because so much happens but what I just love about Wall of Storms is that I think it becomes slightly more character focused and the world opens up even more, which I didn't really think was possible after reading Grace of Kings. You just get utterly, utterly hooked into each single plot. Ken Liu calls this silk punk, which I'm not really exactly sure what the definition is, but similarly to steampunk, we have like modern inventions and we are starting to see like more and more modern technology like popping up in this world, which again is having huge implications for everything. Some of the best animal creatures I've come across. The scale is massive. The world building is S tier. Now I also read the third book, The Whale Throne, which was also very good. And I absolutely can't wait to read the fourth and last book, Speaking of Bones, early next year, hopefully, because I need to get to the end of the series to see how it finishes. But yeah, Wall of Storms, absolute masterpiece. And more people really, really, really need to check out Ken Liu because he is criminally underrated in the fantasy community. So those are my top 10 with five honorable mentioned books I read this year. Now I read some really, really good books that did not make this list. So I might make a whole video just highlighting all the different books I read or something. So let me know if you're interested in that one. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. Now, if you want to support what I do here, then I do have a Patreon. Now, a reason why I created a Patreon was to find a new way to reinvest to the channel because basically since I created my Patreon, I spent around 100% of my earnings to hire an editor to do a couple of videos for me a month. Now, since creating my Patreon, an editor has done more than 20 videos for me on my channel, so it makes a huge difference. Now, if you join my Patreon, you will also get some benefits. For example, you'll get a name in my videos like these guys. You'll also be able to join the exclusive Viking book club where every month we read one book together and you might be the one to put the book forward. This month we're reading this book and next month we're reading this book. You also get to vote on my next read, get access to exclusive videos like a wrap up or even book reviews and so much more. But this is totally voluntary but all support is much appreciated.